If you have only been using NA10 Cloud so far, you're missing out on features that can extend NA10's capabilities even further, including the ability to run as many workflows as you want. So that's why in this video, I want to show you how to set up NA10 on your own virtual private server, as well as showing you a workflow that I built with tools that are not available on NA10 Cloud, such as community nodes. We'll be using Hostinger to set up the server since it's one of the most reliable and affordable options that I found out there. So stick around because I'll walk you through everything step by step so you can set this up once and start running private, more flexible workflows. Let's get straight into it. So the first thing that you're going to do is come to this website with the link that I left in the description. And then you're going to scroll down and you're going to see the different hosting plans. And I want to quickly point that I've tried several other providers to host N810 on, such as Render, Railway, and I chatted with many of you, you were having a lot of problems with Railway. I also tried DigitalOcean and also Docker itself. And, you know, based from all of the ones that I tried, I think that Hostinger is probably the best one based on how easy it is to set up how easy it is to maintain and the pricing as well. The pricing is very generous, especially now because they have a 61% off the annual plan, which honestly, I think it's amazing. I've never seen such discounts, especially with the one that I'm going to give you right now. So stay tuned. So if you have a look at the different hosting plans, you'll see that you have KVM 1, 2, 4, and 8. And so the different numbers represent the amount of virtual CPU cores that you get with your plan. The thing is that I first started with KVM 1 and I quickly switched to KVM 2 because yeah, I just needed more, more RAM. But the thing is that from KVM2, I never felt the need to switch onto four or eight. Like I'm pretty happy right now with KVM2. So I really recommend this plan if you're thinking about choosing one. So for the specs of this one, two vCPU cores, honestly, pretty good for most use cases. You have eight gigs of RAM, pretty generous. And yeah, generous as well with a hundred gigs of RAM and bandwidth. I think this is pretty good pretty solid plan. And the thing is that also it works on a Linux OS, which is pretty robust and reliable. To add on that reliability, they have data centers all around the world. So Hostinger is a really big company. They have so many users compared to other providers. So the more data centers worldwide that you have, well, that just means that the less errors that you're going to have you know, if there's any outages, then you're going to be able to connect to any other data center relatively quick. So yeah, I suggest that you choose KVM2. Just go ahead and choose the plan. And you'll see here that, yeah, choose the 24 months plan. Honestly, it's pretty generous. You end up saving a decent amount of money. As I said, again, I never saw a deal like this before. And yeah, so just imagine you already have a 61% discount, but now I'm gonna help you even further because I'm gonna give you an extra coupon code. So if you type in here, Frank Nidlard, you'll get an extra 10% discount. So just, just because you're watching this video, you're getting an extra 10% discount, pretty much. <laughs> so yeah, happy birthday, I guess. So leave the server location as it is. It's already gonna choose the closest to where you are. Regarding the operating system, I suggest you choose Ubuntu. Ubuntu is pretty good. So it already uh, gives you the latest version. So go ahead and click confirm. And here you can choose other ones, but yeah, stay with Ubuntu and then you're gonna hit continue. All right, so once you're here now, you're going to go through your billing address, make sure to fill that up. So I'm gonna do that right now. So once you filled in your billing address, you're gonna do the same with the payment details. And once you fill in your card, then hit submit payment. I'm not gonna do that first of all, because I don't wanna put my card details here. And second of all, I already have bought this plan. So I'll see you on the dashboard that you'll see once you hit submit payment. So if you've completed the payment process, a pop-up window should appear with something like payment done, let's go. So just hit get started on that. And then you should see a screen like this. This is the actual setup. So we're gonna hit start now and then select the location. So it should already choose the closest location to you, but if not select it manually, then select continue. And then for the OS template, you're going to look for N810, okay? So make sure to hit this one. Okay, so then hit select. And for the additional feature, just continue because it's free anyway, so it doesn't matter. And then for the password, this is the password that you're going to use to log into your VPS, okay? So once you host NA10 on Hostinger and you know you go to the URL, you're going to see a login page, right? An NA10 login page. This is the password that you're going to use to log into that. So write one down. And then for the VPS host name, you can change it later, so don't worry about it. And then just hit continue. All right, so one more step to finish your VPS setup. Just hit finish setup. And then it's going to go through this process. It should take somewhere around five minutes. Once this is done, 
I'll be back. Okay, cool. So now you're gonna see something like this. Just hit manage VPS. And now you're gonna see this, I just skip it. You can do this later. And now you should see this. So we're running right now on Ubuntu 24.04, KVM2 plan, perfect, root access. And then you see that we have NA10 on the top. Okay, perfect. So now what you're going to do is hit manage app and it's going to open a new tab for us. And this is where we're going to set up our details. Okay, set up our owner account. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, once you're in, then just fill this in. I just usually just click random stuff. Get started. Yes, so once you see this, make sure to select send me a free licensee, okay? So it's just gonna give you some great additional features. So hit that and then go ahead and go to your email, okay? The email that you added at the start of the setup. So if you remember on the login page, you put an email, make sure to go to that email and grab the license key. So this is the email that I'm talking about. Just hit activate license key and it should bring you to your N8 instance and it should already be activated. So now you should see that you are on the community edition. So that's great. All right, so that's pretty much it. Congratulations. Now you have N8 on your very own private server. And the big benefit of having this, as I explained in the start of the video, is having access to these community nodes, okay? So once you install a community node here, what you're doing is cloning this GitHub repository that is developed by some smart people. And when you start building a workflow, you are going to have access to these custom nodes that you install through this section. And it's going to give you capabilities and functionalities that you're not going to get with the cloud version. So we're going to go through a workflow that I've built so that you can, you're able to see these capabilities. But before I do, I want to show you something else. If you go back to your dashboard, you're also going to be able to access this browser terminal, which is going to give you even more flexibility to manage and install extra packages or libraries if you want to add even more functionality. So I guess one of the best examples is if you're aware, you can write code. Okay, so you have these code blocks available also on the cloud version. If you go to custom code here, you can write code, right? And the thing with the cloud version is that it runs the Python code block Okay, runs on a thing called Pyodite, which is limited to the number of functionalities that you know you can run with typical Python. Probably the same with JavaScript. And if there's some libraries that are missing from the cloud version, right? Because you're using Pyodite, then you can install them over here. Okay, so that's one of the good advantages about this. Also the fact that you can be really meticulous when it comes to the maintenance of, of your server. These are the two biggest advantages. Oh, and I forgot one other benefit, which I didn't mention before, which is the ability to run as many workflows as you want. Because on the cloud plan, you're only able to run five active workflows with 20 euros or whatever the equivalent that is in dollars. And with 50 euros, you get 15 active workflows. So if you wanna go on top of that, then you have to either self-host, which is essentially what we're doing here, or have it hosted by an then. Sure, if you know if you're a large enterprise and you have you know many complexities dealing within your business, then it might be beneficial for you to have all the workflows maintained by them, right? All the infrastructure maintained by them. But you most likely are a medium-sized business or a small business, which in that case, then you know self-hosting it yourself using methods like Hostinger or running it somewhere else, whatever it is, it's much better because. As I said, you get as many workflows as you want. Sure, you have to maintain it yourself, but these services and providers have made it really easy for you to maintain. So, you know, you also get help and you can always search tutorials on how to do certain things. So with ChatGPT, YouTube and the internet, now you can become your own infrastructure expert as well when self-hosting. All right, so we're going to go through this workflow that I've built that I started to use recently. So what this does is that every day at 7 a.m., we are getting some news using an RSS feed. If you're not aware of RSS, what, what that means, it stands for really simple syndication. And this is a platform that allows you to grab news from different websites, okay? So you can grab news from individual websites. It doesn't have to be a website specifically. YouTube is, is on a site, right, as well. So it could be from anywhere. So if you check here, let's create a new feed. You can grab pretty much anything on browsers. So Instagram, X, TikTok, RSS feeds, whatever you want. And you can grab them, as I mentioned, individually, or you can bundle them together so that whenever you get a news, a new article or blog, from any of those four sites, let's say, it's going to appear in this bundle. So that's what I did here. And essentially, the way I do this is I copy this, okay? You can copy the URL. So obviously, you make a website, uh, you need to get a plan. I got the cheap $10 plan, and it allows you for up to 15 feeds, which is enough for me. So what I do is that I come back, I add the URL right there, 
and then I'm running a piece of code that pretty much neatens everything. So I might receive perhaps four articles or five articles on that bundle in that day. And what I want to do is grab all of those different news together and put them in one single object because what happens is that with this RSS node here, we're gonna pass through four different news, right? From that bundle, they'll be separated. So I'm just joining them together so that I can then pass them to OpenAI as a single object. And then it's gonna make me, it's gonna neaten that because I think it's in it's in HTML. And yeah, it's just gonna make me a little summary. I'm gonna pass that through 11 labs and it's gonna make me a nice summary, right? We're gonna do text to speech and then we're sending it to Telegram. All right, so let's run this. Let's test the workflow. So you see here that we have four items, okay? So we're actually grabbing these four items and putting them into one variable, one object. We're passing it on to OpenAI. So I gave it a few instructions. You're concise and engaging a news anchor as a system message. And then I passed it the combined news from the last node. We're passing it now to 11 labs. So we passed it the, the previous message. And then I'm choosing an ID here, a voice ID, instead of the predefined list that I have, because they're, they're very little. I'll show you how to do that now. So now it's processing that. And then I should receive the podcast style audio in, in my, as you heard, <laughs> in my inbox on Telegram. So let's have a look here. We receive a voice. Hey friends, let's dive into today's tech scoop with a dash of excitement. First up, we've got an update from the world of filmmaking that feels like it's straight out of a sci-fi movie. Atlas was tested onto the set. Could trans so I'm essentially replicating all of these uh, podcasts that you hear on Spotify. So now you can have this right in your Telegram and you can choose, you can obviously choose the length of this. So if you want to make it 10 minutes and you can choose whatever news you want. I really like this because I get to hear this first of all, without any ads, because Spotify has ads, right? They put ads in between, which I don't want to hear. You can make it as long as you want and you can have the news from whatever feeds you want as well. So if you're already doing this, on Instagram or you're listening or you're reading some news on, on Reddit or whatever, you know, instead of reading it, just, you know, listen to it whenever you're driving or whenever you're walking and it just makes life a little bit easier, right? So I currently am using it and it's pretty helpful. And as, as you see, it's pretty easy to do. The advantage of this is that 11 labs is a community node. So if we go, if we go back here to settings, you check the community nodes. I install this as a community node over, where is it here? Right, so you want to install this, just go here, then put this as a NPM package name, and then hit I understand, okay, and then hit install. I already have it, so it's not gonna work. And this just saves the hassle of having to do this via an API request and whatnot. You just, you know, you just put put in the node and put speech, text to speech, add the text and add the voice ID, and that's it. Obviously, you have to get the API key which you do by going over here, create an account on 11 labs, and then go to, where is it? I'm here. So make sure you hit API keys and create one, okay? So go ahead and create one, copy it, and then paste it back here, right? Just create a credential. And that's it. If you want to choose a voice, then you, you can go to voices, select any that you like. So let's say you want to use this one. You got to be careful if you don't know where you're going because you might not get there. <laughs> You click use, right? And I think now you should have it on your voices, right? You see here? So these are all the voices that I selected. What is it? Is this my, my own voices? Well, it doesn't matter. So now what you do here is you select view, you click view here over here. And then there's a little thing here on the, on the bottom that says ID. You're gonna copy that, drag it across and then paste that. Cool. So that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do to set that up. And then with the Telegram part, with the Telegram API, you have an API that you have to grab. There's this bot father, okay? I'll leave a link to this. Essentially, you need to search it over here. So if you put bot father, you're going to find this and then uh, it's going to go through this kind of conversation here. So you're going to get to a point where it's going to give you, I don't want to put it here, but it's going to give you an, uh, an API key. And essentially you just paste that there, create a credential, paste that there. A message, send audio, the chat ID, where do you get that from? So you go back and then you select another bot, okay? So it's user info bot, okay? Select that. And then it's literally just gonna give you the ID straight away. You put that chat ID there, select binary file, select data. So if we run this again, you're gonna see that in one second. There you go. So if you see here, we're getting that, we're creating a binary file. Hey there, got some exciting tech stories for you today. So, And then we're passing that onto here. We're calling the data file and that's it. Then it gets sent. So that's it. It's a pretty simple workflow 
But the fact that I'm able to install this as a community node and just paste it directly there without doing any API requests really helps. And then what I, what I can do, I just put that back here, put the schedule trigger. And now every day at 7 a.m., I'm gonna get a really nice fresh audio with the latest news that I'm personally interested about with no ads, <laughs> okay? So so yeah, that's, that's the end of this uh, workflow. All right, and two final things before I leave. So the first one is that if you want to check the other community nodes, I'm going to leave a link to this GitHub repository, which contains all of the main GitHub community nodes that you can install. So all that you have to do is if you find one that you like, obviously have a read, right? So you go ahead and have a read. It's going to take you to the NPM page and you can read if you're interested. But once you're happy with that, once you're happy and you want to install the, the, the community node, then all you have to do is copy this. Okay, copy that then go to your community nodes. I mean, the to the section of the community nodes in any 10 over here, click install, copy that, I mean, paste that there, understand the risks. So make sure that you understand which community nodes you're installing, okay? So make sure that you check how many people have downloaded, don't downloaded it and any comments, right? If there's many bad comments about it, then obviously don't, I would suggest you don't download it. But yeah, the point is that you, you understand the risks that come with installing a community nodes, because the thing is that you don't have to be a certified developer from NA10 or NPN to build a community node. So yeah, just for you to be aware of the risks. Don't get me wrong, there's many really good community nodes. But yeah, one other thing is as well, if you want to install anything through the terminal, any community nodes through the terminal, or you know, you're creating your own community node and then you want to install it alongside other things, then what you can do is do it through the terminal. I'll leave this code in the community that you can just paste and run. So this is going to install node, node.js, which also has the package manager installed. So if you go on the website here, it says NPM. So essentially this is what allows to install all these community nodes. And with the command that I just put, it, it will go through that. So if this goes well, then you should see that you have a version here. So uh, NPM version here as well as Node.js version. So this, these are the versions. So if you see this, then then that means that you installed it correctly. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So hope you enjoyed the video. You learned something useful out of it. And I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.